welcome to this course on reliability based structural design. In the first lecture, we will talk about the background and what motivates us to study this subject. In structural engineering, we deal with different types of structures with an aim to ensure safety and serviceability. Now, in that process, we follow the design codes that tells us certain guidelines to follow so that the end result ensures the safety of the structure. Now, if we look at different examples where the structures were designed following the existing code of practices, yet those structures experience failure for various reasons. So, if we can take a few examples on the screen. The first one is during Latour earthquake in 1993. Then the second one is Kobe earthquake in 1995. And then there are other examples of structural failures experienced in offshore industry. Now, all these structures were designed following certain guidelines. However, as they experience their operating conditions, then because of various reasons they experience failure. Now, this motivates us to investigate why these structures failed. To answer that question, we have to review the design process that we often follow. Now, the design process involves certain analysis and after the analysis, we actually select the materials and the geometry of the structure so that it can withstand the applied stress and also it can perform certain serviceability criteria. Now, traditionally our design approach focuses on deterministic guidelines. In that process, all these parameters are precisely defined and then we find out the response of the structure. And then based on that analysis, we select the material so that the stresses are well within permissible limits. Now, in this process, we use some factors which ensures the safety and serviceability of the structure. Now, the experience says that this factor of safety as an approach is not adequate. The reason behind this, as we progress, we will see that many parameters involved in the design process cannot be determined with certain degree of certainty. In other words, there is always a degree of uncertainty associated with the design process and which we cannot avoid. Hence, uncertainty is always there and at the same time, risk is certain. Now, to address this issues. Let us quickly review uh, the design with an example. In this example, we have a simply supported beam which has a point load at the center and then as we increase the load, the structure first experiences some kind of stresses and if we look at the stress profile, Initially, it is in the linear range. So, the stress profile is triangular and the maximum stress develops at the extreme fiber and then if we increase the load gradually, a plastic hinge forms. Now, these two diagrams, stress diagram clearly shows the excursion from elasticity to plasticity. Now, if we design this beam against the point load following plastic stress distribution and we apply the principle of virtual work, we basically get this first equation which tells us that the ultimate load has relation with the plastic moment at the center. Now, after some simplification, we can find out the shape factors which is basically the ratio of the plastic moment and the elastic moment. 
and for a rectangular section it turns out to be 1.5. Now this factor which is a non-dimensional number is further used to investigate the load factor. The load factor is nothing but the product of factor of safety and the shape factor. Now if you look at this design philosophy where this factor of safety is nothing but the ratio of the failure stress and the allowable stress is a number that ensures the safety of the structure. Now in this process we precisely define all the parameters involved in the analysis and design. It may be the geometry, may be the material property, may be the boundary conditions, the analysis type all these we define at the beginning and then as we progress in the design process there is no scope that these parameters can deviate from the values that we initially fixed. Now this comes under the deterministic design concept where the factor of safety based approach is used. However, from this design to reality many changes occur. Let us take an example of a material that we very often use in civil engineering. Concrete is the most commonly used material and for every construction we design concrete. In that process we basically specify the characteristic strength of concrete. Now the procedure says that we prepare some samples, it may be either cube or cylinder. Let us take the example of a cube having a size of 150 millimeter. So we prepare some samples, there are certain guidelines to prepare these samples. Once the samples are prepared and then it is cured for certain days. In our codal provisions it is the 28 days that we refer as the strength of the concrete. So after curing we take the samples and then we test it in the UTM and then crush it and find out what is the strength of concrete. Now this process is repeated for a number of samples and if we look at the results although the same concrete coming from the same mixed design the result shows there is a variation of failure load or stress. Now if we carry out tests and find out the characteristic strength for different samples and if you plot we may get this type of probability distributions. At the moment we are yet to define the probability distributions but it is obvious that uh, the values uh, of characteristic strength in different tests they vary from one another. Although it comes from the same mixed design process. It clearly indicates that in the design process the value of concrete strength we, co we consider as a deterministic value in reality it has certain inherent uncertainty involved. Even the Indian code IS 456 says that we should take the 95 percentile value of the 28 days strength. It clearly means that there is a inherent uncertainty involved and the code specifies how to deal with that uncertainty. We consider 95 percentile values that means still there is a scope that some of the concrete specimen can give the strength below the allowable limit. This is what is always involved with all the parameters in the design process. Now if we identify what are the factors that affect the design we will see that the factor involves geometry material property, boundary conditions, loads, type of analysis, then construction practices and then of course operating environment. So all these factors affect the design process and also the performance of the structure on ground. Now these parameters although we consider them to be deterministic but in reality they always experience some kind of variations from the design value that we use 
in the deterministic design process. Now, this is the reason why a structure which is designed in the deterministic framework shows some kind of variations on ground and hence there is a scope for extreme behavior of the structure which may lead to failure. So, to sum up deterministic approach has the parameters which are exactly defined. Then of course, if we define all the parameters, our mathematical model is also defined. So, we know the system response precisely before we start the design process. And the outcome of this design process is either an over design or an under design, which itself ensures that there is a variation in the performance. Overall, this is a factor of safety based approach, factor of safety or load factor, all these are non dimensional numbers which ensures the safety of the structure. Now, in that process, we have two major factors, one is capacity, another is demand. Now, so long the capacity is more than the demand, we have the safety always ensured for a particular structure. Unfortunately, both these capacity and demand are also having some inherent uncertainty because of the uncertainty associated with the parameters involved in the design process, which is ultimately reflected either in the capacity or in the demand. So, if we plot the probability distribution, the figure on the screen shows how these two affects the design. Now, if we consider the mean value of capacity and demand, of course, from this figure we can see the capacity is always more than the demand. However, if we look at the probability distribution, there is always a chance where the capacity of the structure is actually less than the demand. And this is the reason why even a factor of safety based design offers a structure that experience failure in reality. For that, the solution is from the deterministic approach, we have to focus on the stochastic approach. Now, the speciality in this is that all the parameters involved are probabilistically defined. Because we consider randomness in the parameters involved, naturally the output or the system response is also random. So, we need to define the input and output relation in probabilistic sense. Then instead of a factor of safety based approach, in this philosophy, we consider the probability of failure as the main guiding criteria for the safe design of the structure. And in that process, because we ensure the failure based design, the probability of failure, the outcome is a robust system, which is neither over design nor under design, but all the parameters are defined in probabilistic sense, ultimately giving us the actual probability of failure of the structure. Now, the reliability of the structure is defined as the 1 minus probability of failure. As we progress in the course, we will see. Uh, that. So, we can define how much trustworthy the structure that we design considering the uncertainty which is inevitable. Now, in this course, we have altogether 12 weeks and the topic that we will cover is actually on the screen. So, we will start with the theory of probability where we will define random variables both discrete and continuous, their properties, then algebra of variance, expectation and moments, it will be followed by joint distributions and covariance and correlation coefficients. Once we discuss the theory of probability, then we will move to the reliability based design. So, it will start with the level 2 reliability methods. So, we will first define the reliability index and then different definitions of reliability index and then finally, we will 
discuss how to quantify this reliability index with examples. And in that process, we will consider first order reliability methods and its improved versions. Once we discuss this, next module we will talk about ISO probabilistic transformations and here we will consider different models in ISO probabilistic transformations, their applications in first order reliability methods and then the improvement of first order reliability methods in the form of second order reliability methods. Once we cover the gradient based reliability methods, then we will move over to simulation based reliability methods and we will talk about Monte Carlo simulations, its advantage and disadvantage, then the variance reduction techniques and some of the important advanced Monte Carlo simulation technique like important sampling method. Then we will move over to implicit performance function. Under that topic, we will talk about polynomial response surface method, then an improved version of that where moving least square approach is adopted and then of course, it will come with some examples and case studies. Then we will talk about code calibrations, where we will talk about partial safety factors which we are very much familiar with in our design deterministic design process. Then the optimal partial safety factors we will describe. It will be followed by some case studies where some practical examples will be taken where the reliability based design is applied. And it will be followed by the last topic of this course an introduction to stochastic FEM. Some of the books that will follow are there on your screen. First three books will frequently refer. And as we progress in the course, as we cover uh, different topics, I will also update you the study materials so that you can also go through those books. There are some references also and in this course, we will frequently use some of the relevant papers from different journals and conference. As they will appear, uh, we will update you and we will also share those informations. As for the assignments, it will have 25 percent weightage. We have 12 weeks course. In that course, we will have 11 problem sets which we will evaluate and the best 8 we will consider followed by a final exam which will have 75 percent weightage. With that, we come to the closure of this introduction. In our next lecture, we will start discussing theory of probability. Thank you. Thank you.